So I've got a confession. I think I'm a bit of a dome addict. It, can you get addicted to buying domes? I really don't know. So obviously we started with our 5.8 meter one. Then we went for the bigger 6.7 meter one. Then we saw that there was a 10 meter one that we could have as an event dome. So we got that. Then I found out that they do 4.4 meter domes and we saw them at the glamping show. And I really wanted them to have a collection. Oh my goodness, what is wrong with me? So, um, so we happen to have now got two 4.4 meter domes. So they are little 2V domes. Um, so they only have two different struts, an A and a B. Um, and this, is so we've got one that's going to be a dining dome and one that is going to be a, a sleeping in dome so one has insulation so we've got some gray insulation in there and the other one is just completely clear so when we went to the glamping show we saw these domes so this is what they look like there's the the sleeping dome here with the insulation and then the dining one which is all clear on the outside um so yeah so we're a bit obsessed with domes and you know we use True Domes for our, is our dome manufacturer that we use. Um, and I was really lucky, Kelder, who is the, one of the directors of True Domes, came down to visit. And I did a bit of an interview with her about what makes their domes different. And here it is now, I hope you enjoy it. So I really wanted to make a quick video about choosing your manufacturer for your glamping structure. So obviously you could be going for a 500 pound bell tent, um, or you'd be going for like a 100,000 pound shepherd's hut but you still need to choose the right manufacturer. And obviously we feel like we found the right manufacturer in True Domes for our GEDC Domes. And so I'm really excited I've got Kelda here today. She's come to visit us all the way from Nuneaton <laughs> um, to have a look around the site and also to, um, to just to talk about why you would choose True Domes over any other dome. And like, we're not affiliated with True Domes. I would tell you if it was rubbish, but we think <laughs> it is, it's like amazing. Um, so, go on Calder, what can you tell us? <laughs> okay, well, well thanks for having me down here, first of all, it's a real pleasure to be here and to, to kind of see the domes in situ is a real, um, it's a real honour actually, like I, I love it. Um, so I think for us at True Domes, um, we are a British manufacturer um, and that's something that's quite rare um, mm, today. It is. There, there, there's still a few of us around, um, as far as Manufa manufacturers of geodesic domes of this kind we're the only sort of British one mm -hmm. around um, and the thing that I, I hope makes people choose us is the fact that yeah we're based in the UK we use quality materials um, our products are structurally tested as well to mm -hmm. the relevant British and European standards um, we ensure that our you know, just just the curtains. They're they're fire rated. They're black outlined. You know, it's not cheap mm, stuff. No. It's, it's good quality stuff that we use. And the thing that's really unique about us actually is that we use aluminium rather than steel to to build our domes. Um, and again, that's that's unique kind of worldwide as I understand it. Um, and so of course, one of the benefits of using aluminium versus steel is that it's actually never going to rust. Um, and so we really stand by our frames being strong, lightweight, aluminium is um, more kind of environmentally friendly than the other options as well. It's the most recycled of all materials. Um, I have actually bought, oh, I've, <laughs> I've lost my strut. <laughs> oh, I've, lost, I've lost my aluminium strut. What happened to it? I don't, I don't <laughs> know. I bought some props. Yeah, where's the one that I had in my hand? I don't know, we've put it down somewhere. <laughs> Right, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to sprint to get the props. <laughs> so go on then, show us your, uh, well, your props. I brought just some visual aids today. So we talked about earlier about steel versus aluminium. So this is, this is a True Domes strut yep. aluminium. one of our domes. Yep. So it's aluminium. Like yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, it, people ask us about powder coating and we can powder coat them in a whole range of colours, but actually, you don't need to powder coat it and so that's one of the differences yeah. because it with steel you might will probably want to powder coat it because over time this is a galvanized steel tube yeah um, you can see how it's all gone rusty yeah and you can see that over time this has had canvas rubbing against it 
And so you can, if you can imagine that being your structure and having the canvas rub against it over time, even though it's galvanised and treated, um, this will happen. Mm. Um, and then you kind of get those brown kind of rust marks on your... Um, yeah. That wouldn't be good. And you can, yeah, well, and then the other issue that you might have, sometimes from China, is, this one is actually galvanised on the inside, but not all of them are. So we've tested this one to kind of have a look. Uh, okay. This is a kind of a competitor strut. But what you may well find is that if you do go to kind of a, an unscrupulous supplier, they yeah. may well not be galvanised, or if they mm. are galvanised, it might be done on the outside and not the inside. And then what can happen over time on an ungalvanized tube is that it will actually, as it kind of heats up, condensates, heats up, yeah. condensates, it will actually rust on the inside of the tube. Uh, yeah. Um, and so it will take a number of years. You know, it's not yeah. going to happen overnight, don't no. get me wrong. But as far as longevity goes, um, you can't, you kind of can't be an aluminium tube really. And then what you'll find is... Uh, I mean, this one has been galvanised and it has been powder coated as well, but just a little bit of natural wear and tear. It does get some scratches. And of course, where it rubs together and where it all comes yeah. together on the nodes, that's the bit where we have seen competitor products that they tend to rust there yeah. um, as they all kind of sort of rub together. And if you just don't mind, if you feel that. Oh my day, <laughs> that's really heavy. If like you... this, I can sort of balance on my fingertips like there's yeah. nothing to it whereas this has got some weight to it and if you think you know all that weight being shipped over from china or wherever and then even the building process is going to be a lot harder um yeah it just makes sense to be an aluminium and it's like fatter and just better yeah and so yeah you know we, we are probably a little bit biased but um we we stand by our product being we we actually met our parent company we made um tent frames you know and mm. have them for kind of years and years so we're very much you know what a tent's made out of for the most part aluminium yeah because it's it's an outdoor structure here in the uk it's not always warm it no. sometimes sometimes it's january yeah, and it's, it's freezing <laughs> and it's a little bit chilly uh, and a little bit overcast outside and then yes it does rain sometimes too yes. so as far as what's the best option for year round use well, it, it's aluminium. It's yeah, just as strong, um, and it's it's. I think it's quite pretty. Just in it, I like to see an aluminium tube in its yeah kind is, of raw I'm, state. Yeah. I've never thought about powder coating. I think it looks lovely. Yeah, and you know all the insulation fits perfectly, and the curtains are made to the right size and everything. So, um, so yeah, so we're obviously really happy with through domes in that we've bought another glamping dome and we've bought an event dome which is being dug right at the moment so I'm really excited about that. What you're saying about China and everything and and shipping things shipping over from China it's big on our sustainability kind of factor is that we could have got a dome from China for probably half the price but you've got to think about your ethics like it doesn't sit well with me importing stuff over from China kind of on the air miles or the sea miles um, <laughs> and you know the whole supporting of British industry and that sort of thing um, and yeah and they're all made out of steel basically aren't they normally yeah exactly yeah so they're they're all made out of steel um, I mean the experiences that I've had from some people that have had a dome from China I've literally had people on the phone in tears oh, no. because they've had their shipment arrive it cost more than they thought that it was going to because they've still had to pay their duty yes. upon arrival into yeah. the port um, it's been delayed and so it's delayed their building of the site etc um, and then you know one lady she didn't have all of all of the struts weren't available oh. for her dome so it was kind of worthless anyway yeah. um, had another lady who had ordered an insulation kit and it just did not fit oh. and she came to us and she was like can you please you know can I buy one of your insulation kits and I'm like well I'm really sorry but they're not compatible no. because their designs aren't the same as our designs and no, so no way it would work. once you've once you've bought it you're kind of stuck with them yeah because you know, further down the line um, they're all going to be made to different manufacturer specifications mm. and so our domes are kind of modular so if you just want to buy a dome from us in the first instance and come to us at a later date for a, an insulation kit then yeah, that's, that's fine yeah. you can just kind of add it on um, but you do have to think about where you are getting it from because you might not have that luxury of being mm. able to get something in retrospect. And of course, if the worst happens, and you know what, touch wood, this never has, but if the worst case does happen and 
um, one of your guests is really stupid and some damage is sustained mm. or something like that, you need to have something sorted out, then we're here. Yeah, because it'd be really easy for someone to be sat here with a glass of red wine and go, oh, <laughs> there goes the insulation. And then you could literally just replace that panel and yeah, it, would, exactly. it would be fine. Whereas if you're trying to get hold of China and stuff like that, it'd be so much harder. Yeah. So it's that peace of mind as well for me, really. Yeah. And you're such a nice company to deal with. <laughs> Well, thank you. Yeah, I mean, we, our our customers to us, they're not just uh, it. It's a relationship, and that's very much how how we want it. Yeah, um, it's not just a, oh, well, you've what you're doing from from us. Thanks very much. Mm. See you later. Uh, we we have this this kind of wonderful relationship with with our customers. Like, you know, your success is our success, and so we 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 keep really close tabs on how everyone's kind of getting on. We are there at the end of the phone if people have questions or. You know, we have people that they'll buy their dome from us and then they've, I don't know, they've been their instructions. They've not mm. quite managed to put yeah. it together or, you know, they might have some questions later on about doing something. And, you know, we're just there. We're on mm. the same same time zone and happy to help. So And you get like a little True Domes family going on, is that like we've made friends with Dartmoor Domes, with James and Emma, um, and then Thorning Farm Glamping, who have just bought five domes up for you. Like, you know, been chatting to them and you get like, all these like true domes owners kind of that just help each other out it's such a lovely community the glamping community and you guys are actually launching a group aren't you to kind yes. of help with marketing yeah you don't have to have a true domes dome to be in it do you, you no just... no so what's thanks for yeah, mentioning that but yeah it's um so the the group is called glamping true potential um and we just thought you know, there are these great examples of um, customers dotted around the country and actually around the world, to be fair. Um, and and there's that old saying, is it is it field of dreams that if you build it, they will come kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. I think that that's true. The, the, what we've heard is that, you know, if you build it, people do come. But um, there's still then a lot of you want the right people to come and yeah. you want enough people to come. And so what we're trying to do is help people like really unlock the, the potential of their glamping site and we want to kind of help the community as a whole like the industry mm. we're, we're, we're keen to kind of to just kind of build the glamping industry so the glamping true potential um, area is going to be a forum for glamp site owners for would-be glamp site owners um, and also for kind of trusted suppliers as well it's not just limited to to dome manufacturers but, but um, or, or to ourselves as a dome manufacturer but of course, what we are quite keen on is making sure that it's people that share similar, like a similar vision and ethics yeah. as we do, really. So there's some great quality um, safari tent manufacturers that we know of mm -hmm. um, and bell tent and all those kind of people. And we want to kind of just draw upon the, the wealth of knowledge that there is within the community that we kind of know and trust amongst our yeah community. and it goes back to choosing the right manufacturer for your structure so you want to obviously get people who have experienced these different manufacturers and then you can it is, it's a recommendation basically isn't it of yeah. saying yes this is a great product or all oh, that was a little bit too expensive or all oh, this failed or you know you want to be able to use that wealth of knowledge that we've got all these people to say yeah this is the product or this is the manufacturer that I'm going to go with yeah and then and then it's and then it's about marketing whatever it is that you decide upon it's then just kind of marketing it in the right way to make sure that your brand that your name that your location is out there and it's for people to kind of share ideas on you know how they kind of make that work so yeah thank you so much thank you. um i will put the link to the group we don't it hasn't launched yet but no. as soon as it launches i'll add that group to the description so if you think it's something that might help you out if you're starting a glamping site even if you're halfway through your glamping journey or you've been doing it for years you know get in touch with with True Domes or via the group or whatever and see if you want to join it um, and hopefully we can all help each other out because the glamping community is such an amazing one that we all just want to help each other out. You know, we're always happy to, to chat glamping and help anybody out that we can. So, um, so yeah, it'd be lovely to see you in the group. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Um, if you've got any great ideas of what we, where we should put these two 4.4 meter domes, I'm thinking maybe to have one, have the, the hospitality one next to the new event dome as maybe like a cozy chill out space for the kids, or should we have it down by the hut um, as an extra space for afternoon tea? Um, and then with the glamping dome, should we put that like next to another dome to make a separate sleeping area for the kids? Or 
Anyway, any ideas would be greatly appreciated. Let us know in the comments and we will see you again soon.